A lot of the art that we do has been concerned with perception, particularly visual perception, to the point where we started to collaborate with scientists who work in the eye. And, and that was kind of what we talked to Thoram about, was, you know, we want to develop a project called the School of Looking. We're working with the Westside community, but we're also working with the researchers in Kerm. The art project is to make a bridge between Kerm and the community. Um, and also a bridge between art and science. Kerm's education and public engagement programme is trying to reach out to those who don't have any engagement with science. We want to increase people's comfort level with science so that they realise that science is part of their everyday lives. Before the artwork even begins, there's all the dialogue of us discovering what Kuram do, going to see all these researchers, discovering stem cell research, discovering microscopy, discovering all the work they've done. The work of Thomas Ritter has informed the art project very strongly. He's involved in corneal transplants and how we can improve the receptivity and, and reduce rejection yeah, of yeah. corneal transplants. Yeah. Usually they are good guys, you know, because yeah, they, we they're need they're them to, to kill virus yeah, infected virus, cells yeah, yeah, and yeah. tumor cells. Yes. But in this yeah. case it's unfortunate immune reaction, which we don't want. We talked to Thomas for a long time about his research in corneal transplants and the mechanics of the eye in general, which is really what we are very interested in. I mean, for us, the eye is the centre of the universe. One of the things that science and art have in common is looking. And an artist invites us to look at things in a way that we've never looked at them before. Whereas a scientist tries to find ways to see things that were invisible before and examining them, asking questions about them finding ways to measure them. We're all engaged with looking, and I think looking is at the beginning of science and art. So we took this image using a light sheet microscope, which allows you to collect data from much larger volumes of tissue than you would be with the traditional microscopes. That We're also very interested in Gronje Nielsen's work. Uh, Gronje is developing a light sheet fluorescent microscope. A lot of the images that the lab are producing are extraordinarily beautiful images of, you know, microscopic cells, DNA, things that we can't see at all with the naked eye. And so for us, that's, as artists, that's very, very interesting. Gaining more knowledge is always a positive thing. In the workshops at the moment, Anne and Dennis are creating a very nice atmosphere which makes it easier for people to become more interested in something which they would have found difficult to access. I notice now that some of the participants who took part in November and are doing workshops again in May, that they know more about these chronic illnesses and they're becoming more science literate. The helmets were a real draw in for people because they're such a visually strong statement. You, you know, literally you walk around the corner and there's this massive shiny silver helmet with various different altered perceptions and the ideas of the helmets is to see the world in a different way. The artists have worked with young people over the course of it, they've worked with members of the travelling community, with people living here locally in Westside, people who are in direct provision for example also came along and attended. <laughs> it's really interesting, it's almost like everything's kind of flickering. Flickering, you feel yeah. the, like the colours change while your eye is trying to adjust between the two sides. Yeah. In terms of science, this would be a perceptual adaptation experiment. And in terms of art, it's just understanding what complementary colours are and colour theory. And people really enjoyed seeing how this was working in their visual cortex. And, you know, closing one eye, closing the other, testing what would happen when they looked at different colours. <laughs> Oh, they're very nice. Oh, that's lovely, but you're smiling a lot. And then we thought about taking portraits of the researchers and of members of the community and setting those portraits against a background of, of research. And it could be research that Kerm are doing or research that people would like to do or dream about. So we're making everybody a researcher. The way we thought we'd try and connect that to 
what interests us, which is vision and which is also an aspect of Kuran's research, is using negative afterimage. So negative afterimage was you look at a colour for 10 seconds or 15 seconds and it bleaches that colour out of your retina, it bleaches the cones which receive that colour. And you look at something else afterwards and you can't see that colour. It's like it's like that colour becomes a, becomes an afterimage. But the afterimage is the negative of that colour. So we developed, from that we developed a particular challenge, which is to show people a coloured composition, a kind of abstract coloured composition, and then afterwards to show them a black and white image. And if their eyes don't move between the two, the black and white image is coloured by the image that they'd seen before, coloured with negative colours from those. So if the colours they were looking at were green, they'd be magenta, blue, it'd be yellow. So it becomes this interesting sort of composition where you look at two very, very different images and the two work together to give you a full colour image. We have a series of beautiful portraits of, of the researchers and of local people together. But one of the more interesting parts of it was the, the artist deciding on the backdrop that was placed behind the person's portrait. They very cleverly found images that they felt would kind of match what that person had said that they were interested in. The portraits are, are much stronger because of that little glimpse of the mind of the person in, involved. It allowed the participant to bring something of themselves into the project. And hopefully a door has been opened a little bit so they can see that this research is going on locally and I mean, somebody may have a particular condition or whatever and they've been aware that, that there's research going on. For all that the subject matter is very serious, they're very hard and difficult conditions to pe for people to deal with. I think people are inspired by the fact that there are people trying to solve some of the problems that are there, literally just down the road from the resource centre. Definitely the project has increased interest in science. The workshop participants are absolutely inspired by what they're hearing and seeing and they are actually trying to get more information and find out more about different areas of science. We're all artists and all scientists. I mean, we're all interested in discovery and invention and creation. And I think what's important about this type of project is that you're opening that up to the community.